the power of your energy when you go into these things is really heavily going to affect how you come out of them. Hello and welcome to the Feminine as Fuck podcast. I'm your host, Monica Yates, a period and women's life coach, where I help women to harness the power of their period and connect back to their true superpowers. In these episodes, we'll be talking about all things periods, vaginas, hormones, women's health, sex, confidence, food, femininity, and all the stuff that goes through our heads. You will walk away from each episode with new nuggets and truth bombs, as I don't seem to have a filter and I love talking about all the shit that people are too afraid to say, but everyone is thinking. Hey, sexy ladies, welcome back to my podcast. Super excited to have you here as per usual. Um, it's, I'm sounding a bit quieter probably than normal because it's about 9 p.m. at night, but I wanted to record this podcast for you guys. Um, I've been getting some questions about my healing journey, and I wanted to share with you guys the things that I do before surgery um, and then after surgery. And this is that the surgery I just had on my leg from my ski accident. Um, and if you haven't watched my YouTube on that, you can to understand the full story. But Um, that, this is my third surgery that I've had from this same ski accident, but the 11th time I've been in hospital. So I've had my fair share of down times, (laughs) you could say. So this is, this is totally going to relate to whether you have, um, you know, leg surgery, ankle surgery, toe surgery, or having your wisdom teeth out. It doesn't really matter. The bottom line is you want to be setting your body up so that it can deal with the inflammation and so that it can heal itself as quickly as possible. So you can get back to living a kick-ass life. So firstly, before you go into surgery, surgery is obviously a really, really big stress for your body. So before I went in, I was obviously walking lots. I was exercising lots. So I felt strong. So my muscles were strong, all that jazz. I was also making sure that I did not drink any alcohol um, for about two months before I went into surgery. The reason for that being is that your body is about to go through a fuck ton of drugs. Sorry, the drugs that are going to be pumped through your body are a lot are a lot. Not only do you have the anesthetic, then you've got um, painkillers, then you've got like, you know, they give you like nausea tablets for the painkillers. They give you like, you know, constipation tablets. It's just like a pill upon a pill upon a pill upon a pill. Bottom line is, and I made this mistake the first time I had my leg surgery of not taking the painkillers because I was like, nope, fuck that shit. I'm going to heal naturally. I'm going to use meditation. And I did do a lot of that and that really helped. But the bottom line is that actually, and this is not saying this can happen to everybody, but what it did for my brain was that I created this like really deep rooted stress response. So basically every time somebody was near my leg, close to my leg, anything was, if there was anything touching my leg or near my leg, I, my body would get freaked out. I would get stressed out because my body associated so much pain with that leg, right? Even though there was no pain there, it created it. And that's because for so long it was in so much pain because I was like so against the painkillers. And this is where the approach of Eastern medicine with also having the approach of like Western medicine is there for a purpose and we need it. So let's use it, right? In times like this, we need the painkillers. There is no there is no ability for you to heal naturally or for you to even get through the pain and get to the other side if you are in agonizing pain, like your body will begin to shut down. It's too stressful. Um, so that's the first thing. So you want to make sure that before you can have before you have surgery, and this is obviously if it's a surgery that's planned. Like the first time I had leg surgery, it wasn't a planned surgery, so therefore I wasn't like doing all this stuff beforehand. However, my life is like supported for a surgery at any time pretty much because I'm always like super anal healthy. Um, anyway, and so this second time, this third time that I went in, I also made sure that my energy was really clear. And I think this was probably the best thing that I could have done this time around. Like, obviously, I was going in with a very different mindset. The second operation I had, it was, I had it for an abscess in my leg. So one of the stitches didn't dissolve properly from the first surgery and it created a hole in my leg. So I had this surgeon and I did not like him, but I didn't have a choice about my surgeon because the initial guy I was seeing was like, sorry, I can't do the surgery. I'm leaving for holidays in two weeks. I don't want to deal with it, basically. They were all dickheads. And, um, so I was handed off to some other guy, right? And his, his bedside manner was horrendous. Now I'm not exactly the dream patient. I will question you. I will make you explain everything. I will cry. I will not want to do things. I don't like surgery. I don't like hospital. Like I just don't like it. Right. And to be honest, I'm like, who the fuck does like surgery anyway? So before we went in, I had my kinesiologist come, um, before we went in for the surgery. And obviously I was also not in the greatest headspace because it was like two and a half months after 
Well, no, it was about three months after the first surgery. So I was still recovering. I hated the fact that I had to have surgery. Um, I hated that I was on my ass the whole time that I couldn't do things. So the idea of another surgery was like a bit too much for me to handle at the time. And I was I wasn't exactly getting the support from the surgeon. So my kinesiologist actually came into the hospital before my surgery and we did a session and the surgeon like interrupted me through the appointment throughout like when we were doing the kinesiology and just like had no respect for what was happening and it really pissed me off so then anyway long story short we were having a screaming match in the hospital room before the surgery horrendous I know and um and then afterwards you know then when they took me down to the theater room I said to the anesthesiologist you need to put the um anis- and uh, the anis- whatever the fucking drug is into when you you know how like they put the needle in and then they press the liquid or whatever through the needle into the into your vein right I need it to go very 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 slowly because I have small veins and it just hurts me a lot right? And I don't like being hurt. Obviously nobody does. So he was putting the stuff in. I'm lying on the theater table and I'm screaming my face off, asking him to slow down. And would he slow down? No, he would not slow down. And so legitimately it was like I was being tortured. Like I am not over-exaggerating. It was like I was being tortured and then I was obviously put to sleep. So I was knocked out. Um, and people are like, people, I've, I've actually told this to nurses this time around. And I told them, do not let the same thing happen again, because I will like, I will not let this slide basically. Um, and they were like, people don't remember before surgery. Like they shouldn't remember that five minutes beforehand. And I legit said to her, I was like, yeah, well, I remember. So, so I was like, so you better get the anesthesiologist to make sure that he puts that shit in so slowly. It's like watching bricks be laid. Um, I didn't actually say that, but that was like my, you know, she got, she got the vibe anyway. Um, that was the second surgery. So obviously I was going in with shit energy and blah, blah, blah. I mean, I obviously healed fine after that one, but the bottom line was that my leg was in such a bad, um, position for so long. It was, you know, in the one position for so long. Cause I, it was such an extensive surgery that it created so much scar tissue and I was having so many problems with the metal. That's why I had to get this next surgery to get all of that out. So I could be pain-free. Um, and although going in surgery wasn't ideal, I was going in with a good mindset because I was excited for the other side, right? I was getting scared leading up to it, of course, and it was slowly hitting me and I was getting a little bit overwhelmed. But at the end of the day, I was doing it because I wanted to be able to get into an Uber like a normal person. I wanted to be able to step into the shower like a normal person. I would want to be able to have sex without worrying about my leg and, so I was excited for what was on the other side, right? I was excited for being able to straighten my knee more and bend my knee more because the scar tissue was coming out. And so at the end of the day, I was going in with a positive, uplifting, good energy mindset and also just like high vibe. Um, I also got my kinesiologist to, we did a session before I went in um, a couple of days beforehand to really clear my energy, make sure it was good. And then when I was in the hospital and even before that, I was doing lots of meditation, sending lots of gold light through my body, clearing out anything negative, sending lots of gold light to my leg. Um, I was remaining really calm as well and all that jazz and just expressing my needs and my desires to the doctors. Um, so for example, they were going to put an injection in my stomach that's like um, a blood thinner or something like that. Um, no, it was a block. No, 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 it was a blood thinner. And um, I was like, no, I'm not having something in my stomach. I actually had my period um, when I had the surgery. Bummer, I know. I love my period, but you know exactly the best time when you're having leg surgery to get a period because like shoving a tampon up there is like not the easiest thing to do afterwards. Anyway, beside the point, point being, um, so I actually voiced that out. I said numerous times, I don't want that. I don't want that. And they're like, it's not near your womb. It's not near your uterus. And I'm like, I don't care. I don't want it in my stomach. And guess what? They could do it elsewhere. They don't tell you they can do it elsewhere. But if you push enough, there's always going to be another another option. Well, I'm going to say this. Generally speaking, there's always another option. I can't. I don't want to give definites. Um, anyway, so before I was going to the surgery as well, I was just being really nice to the nurses, keeping my vibe really high. Thinking, actually, the nurses were really, really nice um, this time around. The last time around, they were shit. Um, and they were always like, go to your happy place. So I was going to my happy place. I was always filling my body with really good energy. I was clearing out anxiety. I was clearing out um, any fear that I could feel coming up in my body. So I was going with really clear energy. That was obviously step, step number one in terms of energetics. 
Another thing is obviously I was not having any alcohol. I always am having a diet that is very high in vegetables, a little bit, a little bit of meat and then lots of healthy fats. So my liver is like rocking and rolling all the time, which is really, really important to make sure that when I do come out of the surgery, it is pumping and it's detoxing and it's feeling really healthy and like it's got the ability to do so. So that was obviously another really important thing um, to do. And then also what else? Lots of water. Um, I was making so sure that my stress was really low before the surgery. I was also, um, what else was I doing? Um, honestly, I was just focusing on the why, right? I was focusing on the other side. Um, I knew that I'd be okay. I also said to myself this time that I would take the painkillers and I would not worry about me losing muscle or me getting a little bit soft around the edges because at the end of the day, I was more concerned and more excited for the fact that I was not going to be living in pain because the biggest lesson I learned from the first round when I had my first surgery was like, it was really hard seeing my body after that. I'm normally able to do Pilates all the time, very toned, blah, 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 blah. Um, I, in case you don't know, I think I did this on, I did an Instagram post actually on it. It, I I was doing an ex, I was was doing Pilates one day and I like, it finally occurred. I finally just had this like emotion wash over me of like, my body has bounced back. And, um, the reason I say this and the reason I want to share this with you is like, I've never been one for a massive, a massive amount of cellulite. Um, like a bit on my bum and around my thighs, like normal, like really not that much actually. Um, but after my first surgery, because of the amount of drugs I was on, when I say the amount of drugs, I'm talking, there was an A4 sheet and my parents had to keep a list and keep track with like a table of when they were giving me things. I was loopy as I was off my face. I was taking really hard hardcore narcotics. Um, it was, it was intense anyway. So I actually developed a cellulite on my stomach, never had that before. And I was mortified. Um, and I felt so ashamed of my body. I not ashamed. I, sorry, not ashamed of my body. I felt, I felt like I was letting my body down. That's what it was. I felt so sorry for my body. I felt guilt. I felt like I wasn't doing enough or that I was betraying my body. And it was really hard. Um, to, it was really hard to deal with. Um, but what I learned that last year was how quickly my body can bounce back and how you think that one year or whatever is like, Oh my God, it's going to ruin my life, but it's one year and it goes so quickly. Um, and honestly that time is nothing. It's honestly nothing. So I wasn't worried about that. I was totally accepting of that this time because I knew that, you know what, I'm going to look after my legs so I can bounce back quickly in terms of doing exercise and getting back into Pilates so I can feel good in my body again. But also I really learned that sexiness does not come from the way you look, but from this core alignment from your soul, from this energy that's ignited within yourself. Um, It is not about what you look like. And we do this a shit ton in my programs and in um, one uh, one that I'm going to be releasing uh, a new one in um, middle of July which I'm really excited for. Um, So yeah, so I also wasn't having this pressure or this um, fear at all around the surgery or post-surgery. And that was a really, really big thing as well because I was going in without any resentment. Sorry, without any, not resentment, without any, what's the word? Um, Oh, I can't think of the word. It starts with R. Resistance, that's the word. I was not going in with any resistance. I was going in with peace and openness, which is really, really important. Um, anyway, so in terms of manifestation of my surgery, um, and, oh, and, and I was also drinking a ton of bone broth and stuff before I went in and taking turmeric and taking all my supplements to make sure that I was feeling hunky dory. Bone broth is key and collagen for your gut. Um, but how crazy is this? So I was like, I said to my mom before I we went and met my surgeon, I was like, I'm not staying over at the hospital. It's not happening. And she was like, Monica, we don't know that. And I was like, okay, well, it's not happening. And then she was, she just goes, yeah, whatever. Um, and then I met with the doctor and he was like, you will need to probably stay one to two nights in the hospital just because it's like a pretty big surgery. We need to monitor pain. We need to monitor your pain levels more than, excuse me, more than anything. And I was like, okay, whatever, let it go. Right. I was like, whatever, not the end of the world. I'm not going to fight it. I'm not going to get me anywhere to fight it. And then guess what? I got out that day. I got out that day, right? That was manifestation number one because I released any resistance to it. And I just was like, whatever it, whatever it needs to be, it needs to be. Second thing I manifested was the, I was talking to the nurses about like the injection thing they put in you to go to sleep, the anesthetic. And they, I said like, actually mom was like, can you give her a bit, give her a bit of happy gas when you're putting it in just to like 
make her like tune out and they were like no we don't do that for adults only kids and she was like oh god okay we're the shot guess what the anesthesiologist put the happy gas on I didn't even ask him I just said please put it in really slowly and he put in he gave me the happy gas so I did not feel that um, needle but more than that I didn't go to sleep with any fear in my body or with any pain or with any stress that was really amazing then the third thing I manifested was the surgeon said to me we'll be able to get majority of the metal out but probably not all of it because there was a plate and some screws at the very back of my tibia and they were going to have to cut my calf bone uh, my cut, cut the calf muscle off my bone um, to get in there and he was like then it's a much more extensive surgery and then it's a longer recovery and that that plate is not causing you problems it's the other ones because I had three plates and 11 screws. They were huge too, humongous screws. Um, and, and I was like, okay, again, doesn't matter. Again, I let go of any resistance. I let go of any expectation. Guess what? He got the plate out. He literally was like, I don't know. I just put my hand in your leg and it was just sitting there and I, would just, I could just pull it out. So I pulled it out. And I was like, what the fuck? Like how random is that, right? But not random. It's just perfect divine synchronicity. Anyway, and then, um, so that all happened. I woke up. Um, I... Yeah, I was fine after and I was feeling okay. You guys probably saw my Instagram story. If you hasn't, if you haven't, go to my highlight and watch Ski Accent number two. I don't even remember recording them, but I'm like crying and I'm, I still have like the tube up my nose and stuff and I'm like fucking Instagram storying. I'm like, Monica, why are you Instagram storying? You've like, you're still high as a kite. You've j- I literally, that would have been just when I got into my, my hospital room. So it, I was fresh out of surgery and here I am fucking Instagram story and like, what the hell? Anyway, you could tell that I fucking love you guys. Um, so, and there's no lack of me showing up for you <laughs> anyway. Um, and then, and then, and then, and then, oh yeah. And then I obviously got out early that eve- that, um, that evening I got out. So I didn't have to stay the night, which was awesome. Cause staying at the night hospital is the worst thing ever because of all the beeping machines, people like checking up on you for 10 seconds, like um, every 10 minutes and you can't get a good night's sleep. Um, anyway, and then when I went to go see my when my, when I went to go see my physio, I never met her before, and um, she watched my surgery. Can you believe that? So physios very very rarely watch surgeries, but they can occasionally. And she was in on my surgery, and she watched my surgery. So she knew everything that was happening in my leg, everything that was inside my knee. She knew. Can you believe that? Like absolutely wild. I just could not get over that. Like out of all the physios. She was there out of all the surgeries. It wasn't, it wasn't like a whole day surgery. It was like a one hour surgery and she was there wild, wild, wild. Anyway, so that was the whole thing that I just wanted to like kind of share with you guys of like the power of your energy when you go into these things is really heavily going to affect how you come out of them. So you do not want to be going in there with like negative energy blocks around your knee or any fears or any negativity because it's not going to allow you to have the best um, recovery or surgery. Oh, also, oh my God, so beautiful. I was crying on my Instagram stories, but you would also see in the highlight because so many of you sent me beautiful messages. And one of my amazing clients, she is an incredible kinesiologist and spiral practitioner and very intuitive and just a lot of energy stuff. And she sent me a message, which I will never, ever forget. Julianne, I fucking love you. Um, I love all my clients, but this just brought me to fucking tears. And she said that I'm even just saying this, I'm like tearing up. She said, um, that she was watching over, oh my God, I'm going to fucking cry. Seriously. Just means like so much to me, the way you guys, um, support me and the messages that I got. It was just fucking incredible. Um, and it made it so much easier, but she said that she lit a candle, um, in her house. And it's, it's like an Irish tradition when somebody needs to be looked, watched over or something like that. And then, um, she said to me um, that she was looking over me the whole, like she was protecting my energy the whole time I was in the surgery um, and that she was making sure that I was in a really high energy state and that nothing was getting bogged down and none of my, none of my energy was getting um, affected. So she was protecting me throughout it and my kinesiologist was also protecting me. But when I, when she saw that, when I saw that message, I just burst into tears and even now it's just like, The support has just been incredible. And honestly, I can't thank you ladies enough for the way that you have supported me through that. Um, Yeah, it's just incredible. So that is that. Um, That's the energy side of things. Obviously, food side of things. Um, When I came out of surgery, um, I was having a shit ton of bone broth, lots of soup, lots and lots of vegetables, lots of brassica vegetables to flush your liver out. 
Um, I was having lots of healthy fats. I was making my cacao elixir um, and I was also popping um, a liver tonic in there. So I just bought some liquid herbs from, they're from actually LA, but you can buy them on iHerb. So I'll, I'll put it on my favorite products page um, or I'll get Haley to put it on my favorite products page. Um, but the liquid herbs that I use, and there was a liver one. So I've been using that and popping that in my elixir every morning um, just to help with this, the process of flushing my liver out. Obviously, not drinking any alcohol, no coffee, keeping my stress really, really low. Um, icing it, obviously, all the time. I was putting, I am putting frankincense oil on um, the bottom of my feet. And I was also putting um, the zendocrine oil from doTERRA on the bottom of my feet, on my spine, and also right where my liver is and massaging that in. Um, just to help. And that was really good. I would like put that on before I would go to sleep and I would shit my brains out in the morning. Um, or even in the middle of the night, I'd wake up at like that 3am time where your liver's flushing out and I would shit my brains out. Like, you know, those shits where you want to like broadcast it on national television because it was like, you feel amazing after it's like fucking, it's almost like orgasmic. It is like a serotonin release. Anyway, they were the sort of poos I was doing. So the Zendocrine essential oil from doTERRA and also the frankincense essential oil. I was using them lots. Um, I was also putting a drop of peppermint oil on my mum was in my cacao elixirs just to help with digestion because I was really bloated after surgery for about a week and a half um, from the anesthetic and also from the drugs. I was on some, I was on some heavy things afterwards, um, but actually, I got off them pretty quickly. I was only on I didn't actually have to take the really heavy one. I was taking quite a heavy anti-inflammatory that made me go a little bit loopy, but I had to take it for five days and I ended up finishing it early because I was like, this is making me go really, really crazy and I don't like it. Um, and then I just took it for like, I just swapped it for some a shit ton of turmeric, like turmeric capsules. Um, and then I was just taking Panadol. So it wasn't too hectic in terms of drugs um, compared to the first lot, but obviously my body's not used to it. So it reacts quite heavily. Um, so I... Um, yeah, I was popping some peppermint oil in my cacao elixirs to help with digestion and even just rubbing a drop of it on my oil, on my stomach and rubbing it in was also really helpful. Um, and then what, what else? Oh yeah. Persilium husk. I was putting in a little bit of koyo, um, and, and having some like blueberries or whatever with it. So I couldn't taste it. Um, just to help my bowels keep moving. So I was flushing out those toxins. because That's really important. Flushing out the toxins. Um, and then obviously having lots, lots of water to also help flush them out was key, key, key for me. But, um, oh, and obviously collagen in my cacao elixir is really important. The camu camu powder is very high in vitamin C in my cacao elixir. Obviously, the cacao is high in antioxidants, um, coconut milk, healthy fats, um, acai powder I also have in there, which was really great for antioxidants. Um, and I had some other mushrooms in there that were just helpful for my liver and detoxification and some other adaptogens. Speaking of adaptogens, um, I'm going to get um, beautiful Lisa on from Holy Mountain, which is one of the brands that I use. Um, she's from Melbourne and she makes them in Melbourne. Um, I'm going to get her on soon for cacao and convos to chat about adaptogens and how we can use them to support our period and our cycle and stress and that sort of stuff. So I'm really excited for that episode. Um, so you'll learn mo lots more about them soon. She's like the expert and more of an expert than me. And I don't really do interviews on my podcast. Um, I do the cacao and convos, which is like a really chill chat. Hers will be a little bit more educational based purely because she is an expert in the field. Um, and I want her expertise on these things because I'm not the expert on mushrooms and she is. Um, I think that's pretty much it in terms of, I mean, you guys know how to heal, but I wanted to give you a little bit of a, a download um, on the story about how the surgery went, the things that I did after. Obviously, lots and lots and lots of sleep was really important um, and really looking after myself. Oh I, oh, I also went for a massage before the surgery to make sure that um, my lymphatic system was working, my um, my body was able to flush out any extra toxins, that I was releasing any stored emotion, that my body wasn't really tense in any way, shape or form because I knew I was going to be sitting down for quite a while after. Um, yeah, and I think that's pretty much everything I did. Obviously, no sugar, no dairy, no gluten, no vegetable oil. Anything that inflames your body is a big no-no. So staying on a very, very low in, um, inflammatory diet is really important. So lots of anti-inflammatory foods. Um, yeah, and that's kind of it. So the, the normal basics, no sugar, basically my normal diet, no sugar, no dairy, no gluten, no grains, no vegetable oil, and then lots of bone broth, collagen, lots of veggies, lots of healthy fats, lots of healthy sources of protein, nuts, seeds, um, 
collagen powder, my elixir, extra herbs and mushrooms to support me and essential oils. And boom, I'm nearly back in tip top shape. I'm trying to get back into things and I cannot wait. Um, so that is the lowdown um, of my surgery. Any questions, you can let me know um, or wait for a QA and a um, on my Instagram story. Make sure you are following me on Instagram because I do lots of lives of Q&A, that sort of stuff, because it keeps, keeps things interesting. Um, I hope that helped with anybody that wanted to know about surgery and what to do before and after. They are my biggest tips and the things that have helped me, and I feel like I'm the surgery queen because I've been through so many. Um, so, yeah, I hope you have a beautiful day, everybody, and I will talk to you very shortly. Bye. Well, thank you again for tuning in and listening to my podcast. I hope that you got lots of nuggets out of today's show. Uh, Please, 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 I would be really grateful if you could leave me a review so that more women can find the podcast and therefore I can help more women understand their period and fix their period problems. Because after all, it's a much nicer life to live when we actually love our cycle because we do have to um, keep up with it every single month. Also, if you have any friends or loved ones that you think will enjoy my podcast, I'd be super grateful if you could send it to them as well, just to share the love. And that's it for now. So I will catch you on the flip side. Have an amazing day or night wherever you are.